Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another point of view video. Hopefully you can see the car I'm looking at right now. It is the brand new Renault Clio and my word, isn't it a stunner? So yes, like I say, I hope you can see it because the camera is strapped to my head so I can't see what it is filming. But let's step inside and go for a drive. We've got keyless entry, so the car opens as you approach it. Uh, let's make my way into this rather nice cabin. Seat belt on. So before I do set off, I just want to um, treat you to the cabin. So I do think it is a nice place to be. You've got nice detailing on the dashboard, a seven inch touchscreen, leather steering wheel. And overall, I think it looks quite grown up and upmarket. Yeah, okay, there are some harder, cheaper sounding plastics here and there, but this is a relatively cheap super mini. So you can't expect everything to be premium. Anyway, you came here for the driving. So with that in mind, let's just start the engine and away we go. Now, because this car isn't quite as sexy or as exotic as the cars that I've been treating you to as of late, there will be a bit more talking uh, in this video. So I will be treating you to my dulcet tones. It feels quite weird to be in a Renault Clio because this car, well, not this particular car, but the Clio in general, has at points been quite a big part of my life. My stepmom had the very first Renault Clio, a Bebop to be exact, and I would remember going down to the seaside, often falling asleep in the back, and that car compared to this was tiny, absolutely tiny. I, I myself owned a Mark III Renault Clio. Oh, hello, very nice. I owned a Mark III Renault Clio. It was a Dynamic Tom Tom, which was uh, at the time a mid-range trim level. That was quite nice, but the engine was just too gutless. It had a 1.2 liter naturally aspirated petrol and it had the get up and go of a snail. Yeah, nice car, but I could have done with a more pokey engine. And now here we are in 2020, driving the brand new Renault Clio. Thankfully, this engine isn't as gutless. So what is under the bonnet? We have a one liter, three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine which offers 100 horsepower along with 160 newton meters of torque. If you prefer that in pound feet, I will pop uh, a subtitle below to give you the imperial measurement. I'm sure many of you aren't really concerned about the performance of this vehicle, but in case you are, zero to 62 miles per hour is done in 11.8 seconds and the top speed is 116 miles per hour. In regard to fuel economy, well, on a combined run, Renault states that this car is capable of 54.3 mpg and this emits 19, 99 grams per kilometre of CO2, meaning for the first year of VED, you will be required to pay £130. In case you're wondering about insurance groups, this car sits in insurance group 10. Now, going back to the fuel economy, as you can hopefully see at this moment in time, I'm doing about 47 Point four. I took this car out for a good run out yesterday and I was able to get an average of 51.5 mpg which is pretty good bearing in mind I had a passenger and I also had the climate control on as well so I think that's pretty respectable. Brakes on this car are pretty good, it's a good amount of feedback through the pedal and the brakes themselves perform well. This engine is mated to a five-speed manual gearbox. You can have an automatic, but that is a CVT unit, which I would probably urge you to avoid because I'm yet to use a CVT, which is any good. And as you would expect, the power is mated to the front wheels, fed to the front wheels, I should say. Dab the brake, turn it in. Now, although this car isn't quite as fun or as rewarding to drive as a Ford Fiesta, it isn't bad. 
It's quite good in the corners. The body roll is well controlled. It has less body roll than I was expecting. The grip, uh, the grip is pretty decent. As I said, the brakes are pretty good. There is one downside though, and that's the round thing in front of me. The steering, it is quite vague, and it gives you very little impression of what the front wheels are doing. Now granted, this isn't built for handling. This is a super mini to be driven in and around town, but compared to a Fiesta or let's say a Seat Ibiza, the steering in this car is quite disappointing. It is nice and light around town though, so it is easier to manoeuvre this vehicle and thankfully the steering does get heavier as you build up speed. And to be honest, I don't really have a problem with the weight of the steering, it's just the feedback and the communication. The overall system is just quite vague and when you're on a nice country lane like this, you are having to apply a bit of guesswork. Speaking of guesswork, which way are you going? I suppose we'll have to wait and see. I'm assuming you're going right. Is that a safe assumption? A few minutes later. Sorry about that, that Suzuki was annoying me, so I decided to go a different way in the end. Drivers that don't indicate is a massive pet hate for me because it requires so little effort, it's just a flick of the wrist. But anyway, small rant aside, back to the Clio. The gear change is okay, it's not too bad. Just watch out for this photographer. Okay, oh my god, that's, oh hello, what's going on there? Oh, I have to go back. That was a that was a Renault Clio 182 Trophy. Already I've been sidetracked. That's a problem with filming in and around Goodwood. You see some wonderful spectacles. Right, I'm gonna head back that way because that looked spicy, whatever that was. So whilst I'm getting my composure back, yes, the change in this car it's okay, it has got a good weight to it, this five-speed manual, but the chain itself is quite rubbery, and it doesn't quite snick into place quite nicely as, let's say, a Ford Fiesta. On the whole, though, the chain is okay. The gear lever doesn't fall into hand very nicely, though. The gear knob itself is quite bulbous. The gear knob's swollen somewhat. It doesn't fall very nicely into your palm, but yes, I know it may sound quite picky, Oh, look at that old Jag. Oh, that's glorious. That really, really is. Now, let's speak about the engine. The one litre, three cylinder turbo petrol. It performs pretty well. It's not quite as zesty as a Ford EcoBoost engine, so you will have to work it a little bit in order to make progress. But for driving around town, it is perfectly fine. Even on the open road, it still holds its own somewhat. But if you're going uphill or if you have passengers, you may find that when you want to get that little burst of performance, you will have to change down to get that extra bit of oomph to get you past whatever you may be overtaking or to get you up that hill. Let's speak about the ride comfort. The ride comfort is pretty good. The chassis may not have that typically French suppleness you may expect, and there is a bit of a firm edge to the ride, but I think it, it would be quite a stretch to call this car uncomfortable. Thankfully though, you have the wonderful front seats, which are very comfortable to sit in. The seat base is foamy and spongy, and the seats are quite supportive as well. Another thing I really like about the driver's seat is it is surprisingly low. I thought this car would have quite a high driving position, but it doesn't. You almost fall into this car. Oh, Impreza, lovely. The Clio, it is a pleasurable car to drive. Although I'd say it's more for comfort than um, a rewarding driving sensation like you get in a Fiesta, this car can be 
relatively entertaining when the going gets twisty. I wouldn't say this this is overly fun, but it's not too bad either. This certainly knows its way around the corner. And when the mood takes it, it can be quite enjoyable. Now, I won't lie, for driving dynamics, if I had the money to go out and buy a brand new Super Mini, my money would probably go on the Ford Fiesta or the Seat Ibiza. However, although this car isn't quite as rewarding to drive, value and space is where the Clio really starts to make sense. So the car I'm sat in right now is the, oh, that's a, quite a large pothole. The car I'm sat in right now is the iconic trim level, which uh, has a starting price of £16,295. Although this car does have a few options, so this car I'm sat in is actually £18,105. So I'm coming back to this bit. I, I, I have to treat you to this. Okay, you're gonna get a bit of wind noise, so apologies in, in advance. God, they swap the cars around that quickly. I'm not too sure what's going on here. But look at that. That is a nice lineup of cars. I'm getting in, the, in these people's shop. Look at that. Right, window back up. I'm definitely have to, I'm gonna have to go back to get a photo. That is too much car porn in one place. There should be a, a health warning on that adult rating or something right so yes back to the Clio once again I got distracted not for the first time so to give you an idea it's just how much value this offers this is the iconic model as I said a few months ago this is um, one up from the entry level Clio the play trim level and to compare this to a base model Fiesta this car this trim level is cheaper oh it needs to change down no, still not a lot of oomph. Let's change down again. There we go. This car is cheaper than the entry-level Fiesta, but it offers more kit. So you can't argue with the value for money. And in regard to the space, this car has the biggest boot in its class. This offers 391 litres. To give you some perspective, that is around 100 more than the Fiesta, and about 50 more, well, more like 45 more, than the Seat Ibiza. So this is a spacious car. Well, the boot is spacious. The rear space isn't quite as generous, if I'm going to be honest. But yes, as I've said, although this car may not be the best to drive in its class, it makes up for it with styling, value for money, and also a big boot. So to talk you through what I get as standard, I get LED headlights as standard, 16 inch alloys, tinted rear windows. I have this seven inch touchscreen, which hopefully you can see. This has DAV radio, Bluetooth, smartphone connectivity, and navigation. I also get rear parking sensors, although this model has got front parking sensors and a reversing camera as part of an optional pack. In regard to safety features, you get six airbags, autonomous emergency braking, hill hold assist, traction control of course, um, and you also get lane departure warning and lane keep assist. You've also got the SOS function up there. So if you do happen to get into a crash, help is at hand. Right, and that concludes this point of view drive video in the brand new Renault Clio. I do really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.